When I first published Systematic Theology in 1994, open theism was a view held by a certain number of people, but it hadn't gained much traction. But it uh, became more controversial as more people started to take up the idea. The idea is, um, you start with saying, if God knows our future choices, then how can they be free? Doesn't that take away our free will? If God knows that I'm going to eat Cheerios tomorrow morning for breakfast, then how can I freely choose to eat Cheerios instead of some other cereal? Um, and so with millions of human choices. So some theologians, Clark Pinnock, John Sanders, Greg Boyd, particularly in the evangelical world, uh, proposed this idea that God does not know future human choices, but the future is open even to God, so it's called open theism. And that guarantees that we have free will. That was their argument. The problem is there are many prophecies in the Bible and many indications that God is the one who knows the future. He alone knows the future and he proves himself to be God in Isaiah, in the 40, in Isaiah 40 to 66. Again and again he affirms that he alone knows the future and he predicts that the false prophets predict the future and their predictions fail. And in fact, I had a graduate student, um, Steve Roy, who published a book with the University Press on this. He counted in the Bible over 2,000 cases where God predicted a future human choice and it came to pass. And so people began to say, well, wait a minute, how can the prophecies of Jesus coming as Messiah be true? How can Jesus' predictions of the end times be true? And the proponents of open theism eventually it would have to end up saying, well, God knows the human heart and he can make a pretty good guess as to what will happen, but he can't be sure. More and more evangelical leaders began to say, this is not the God of the Bible that we know. This is not the teaching of the Bible that we know. It became a controversy within the Evangelical Theological Society. I was a member of the executive committee at that time. And there was a challenge brought against the membership of Greg Boyd, Clark Pinnock, and John Sanders, the three advocates. Greg Boyd dropped out, didn't pay his dues, so there was a challenge only to two. Um, and eventually they wrote position papers, and then Bruce Ware and Roger Nicole, theology professors, wrote responses to them. And then it culminated in a nine-hour meeting at a hotel conference room near Chicago O'Hare Airport, where Sanders and Pinnock came and met with us, and we talked with them. And in the end, they said they thought that the whole procedure had been very fair. But we recommended, as an executive committee, we recommended that their teaching was contrary to Scripture and uh, that they should be excluded from membership, particularly Sanders. I, I can't remember now what we recommended about Pinnock. It was by a lesser margin. Uh, they eventually were not excluded from membership. There needed to be a 67% vote of the society at a business meeting, and the vote was 62%, 62 or 63, to exclude them. And so they retained their membership, but in a way the Lord used it because, uh, put yourself in their position, 62% of the population of the society doesn't want you to be there. I mean, <laughs> That was a rebuke to their viewpoint, and it marginalized the open theism position effectively in the evangelical theological world. But I needed to have a further discussion of it um, because some people still hold to it. But I don't think it's, it's faithfully representing the God of the Bible. And if God doesn't know the future, how can he guide us wisely? How can we trust him to uh, give us good guidance? Because he might be surprised by events turning out differently from what he wants. And that isn't the way the Bible pictures God. What about the question of free will, human free choice? I resolve it by saying that we have a freedom of inclination, that is, we choose what we most want to do and we do it. Now, I think God behind the scenes ordains in advance what history will be and what actions we will take, but we aren't aware of what that is in our life, and he doesn't violate our will, but somehow enables us to choose what we most want to do, but that fits in with his plan for what we are going to do. And I don't think anybody in the history of the world has ever fit those together completely and, and explained it fully. Or do I think we will in this life or maybe, maybe ever.